Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable weekend. It's a beautiful day in the age. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, it's been a very intense work week, but I'm actually at it this weekend. I'm on the way now to kind of unwind with the guys at the lounge. Uh, but tomorrow I'll be speaking to a group of youth in South Houston on the importance of stewarding their gifts, but also the ability to manage difficult times and, 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 and that. So I'm excited about I'm always excited when I get to work with youth. Um, but I'm going to be real brief of what I have to talk to you about. Uh, it's poignant, but it won't take long for me to make my point. Uh, you know the routine. If you like what you see in here on this channel, definitely click the like button, click the share button. And subscribe okay so also we're still on a push to raise money for the work we do in the community on so many different levels if you're unfamiliar with the organization the organization's official website is there and you can literally look at all the stuff that's been chronicled over the years that we can do we do consistently from research and develop program development to advocating for people in school systems in prison um, intimate partner violence domestic violence uh, generational trauma the work we have been doing mental health is a big push right now uh, something we are really intensively focusing on uh, but <clears throat> Yeah, look in the description box and see how you can support that work. That work has to be resourced. Nothing in this world can be done without resources. And this is no difference. No matter how uh, necessary it is, no matter how valuable the work, it will still be required. There will still be a requirement to fund it. All right, with that out of the way, look. I was sitting up and talking the other day and somebody mentioned something that they had saw on social media and asked me what I thought of it. I was like, bam, that's a topic right there for the channel. And it was real simple. It says, if we don't start redeveloping our neighborhood, someone else will. Um, and so but here's the thing though. There are people already doing it. This is where you get gentrification. This is one of the forms of serial force displacement that I consistently talk about that is such a negative draw uh, and has such a negative impact on the black community in so many different ways. Uh, we lose our collective uh, conglomerate power as a community when we're consistently being dispersed and displaced from places that we have traditionally come together as uh, communities and neighbors we're being dispersed and whenever you have a community like an entire community is dispersed and I'm looking at multiple communities that have been historically black communities throughout the years long before I was born uh, in Houston are now being gentrified and as the property values go up uh, because of the redevelopment from outside for sources that don't have the community uh, are those who currently occupy the community uh, community's best interest at heart they come in and they sit up they drive up the prices those drive up the uh, property values the taxes go up because of the property values and when the people can't afford the taxes they foreclose on the property take the property resell the property obviously resell the property at a profit or lease the profit I mean lease the property for long-term profit and passive income so this is an ongoing thing this is the win-win you got places like Harlem that has been gentrified I mean you know I mean I'm talking about that's not just a, a, a thing for New York City that is something that almost every American over the age of 30 can relate to as being something that we recognize and identify with as being a part of our black heritage. And now we're talking about it being gentrified where you got uh, non-black people, let's just say it, one little white ladies in the middle of the night, one o'clock in the morning, walking their freaking poodles without a fear in the world because it's been gentrified. Uh, Brooklyn has been gentrified, but we could expect that when we put a multi-billion dollar basketball arena in the middle of it, uh, 
that's going to come with businesses, that's going to come with a bunch of other things that, again, raise property values and draw a certain type of people that don't look like us. So, again, these are things that happen, but what we are going to have to do is we're going to have to develop the capacity to come together and strategize and work together and be willing to put some sweat in the game. But we won't have a place of our own. We will be a nomad in a land that we've never really truly belonged in, but we won't have a place that we can come and congregate that belongs to us. We will be dispersed. We'll be living in the areas that they allow us to live in with everybody else that really doesn't have a place. And that has to be bothered you because think about it there was white flight where we, we we began to expand from the inner city and push out and we pushed them to the suburbs and we took what they were leaving behind and it was better than what we had and we kept doing that for decades until we ended up in the suburbs and then what they do they come back to the places that we initially moved into and started to re rebuild them and so now they're taking over the inner city uh, in Houston, Uptown, so, uh, uh, Third Ward, which is the area where the University of Houston and TSU is. There's so much more that's historically black. Uh, uh, Yates uh, High School, which is a magnet school, and so much more. Um, all that stuff's over there and, and gentrifying the hell out of it. It's not even Third Ward anymore. It's what, Midtown or something like that. And you know, it's just consistently happening and it's not just in Houston. I hear, I've seen it in Dallas. I hear about it in Charlotte. I hear about it in Philly, um, Atlanta, and so many other places that this is happening. And we are not protecting our interests. And you got to think it's a shame when you've got people who literally fought and worked to actually own, which we talk about a lot. We don't have a yearning to own. And then you talk about so many of us who fought to own only for us to turn around and have it taken away from us uh, through gentrification. We are in a situation in a place now where we really and truly are going to have to do better. And so my thing is we need to get involved in programs. Um, check the website for resources on, and, and suggestions and things that I have been collaborating and working on um, for years. And it requires us to actually care enough to get involved. Look at me. Get in here, Rick. Oh, it ain't me part crooked, it's them. I'm wondering why I'm, no, I'm coming in right. All right, so look, on that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here because there's so much more for me to be doing. And I'm gonna get myself focused on doing that today. Like I said, I gotta speak tomorrow, so I'm getting here and unwind, but look, we have to do better. On that note, look, I'm going to get out. Uh, don't forget, show some love, show some support, donate. Thank you, and have a great day.